Our first guest tonight is an 11 time Grammy winning musician and one of the biggest stars in the world. Her album, Red, Taylor's version, <laughs> is out tomorrow. She's also returning to SNL this week as musical guest along with host Jonathan Majors. Please welcome back to the show the one, the only Taylor Swift, everybody. <laughs> The show. Thanks for having me back. We love having you in the building, especially when it means we get to see you on SNL this coming Saturday. Your fifth time as a musical guest. Yes. What mm. a dream. And uh, and one time host, an incredible host back in the day. Thank you. And I'm wondering. Back you, when I was a teen. It's crazy how young you were. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Because you're young now, and that was a long that time is ago. So, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> I can say it honestly because a, I've also aged. What a friend. No, yeah. you haven't. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much. Those are lies. Don't say lies. Uh, having been a one-time and a first-time host, obviously, when you hosted, do you have any advice for Jonathan, your first-time host uh, this week? Uh, well, I, I met him, and I just want to say he seems like one of the coolest people on Earth. Yeah. I think that everyone needs to watch and just, like, He's amazing. I mean, his work is obviously so incredible, and I'm a big fan. But meeting him, you just get such a good... Very real, very like nor n abnormally talented, normal personality. Yes. Those people are unicorn special. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a <laughs> very, special, very nice combination. Special people. So like, you know, I, I don't, you know, what's weird is I didn't get any advice from anyone when I was hosting, um, which is actually weird because I was like 19. So yeah. I should have <laughs> been given advice. Yeah. Real ball drop on our, our end. Right? Yeah. It, there should have been like a tit, like a, like a like a number of people called to give me advice, um, but no, it's it's you know I think it's just going to be amazing. I'm so happy to get to be there to perform and to sing. You know I I haven't uh, played with my band in years, and we're all like we all find it hard not to like cry that we get to play together. Like we're all like, did you guys make it through that last pass? <laughs> we're in rehearsals just like embarrassing ourselves. Um, so it's just a dream to well, get to do it. Well, I think it must be emotional just to get back together, but also part of the emotion is you're singing songs from, you know, you're re-recording. Uh, this is your second re-record. Yes, I feel like, I know that everybody has busy lives, um, so I, I do feel the need to, like, explain what I'm doing because it's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, like, m music... I've always wanted to own my own music since sure. I started making my music. And if you probably don't know this, but most of your favorite artists do not own their work. Um, the music industry is, uh, eh, you know, <laughs> um, certain corners of it. But I think that um, there was there was something that happened years ago where I um, I made it very clear that I wanted to be able to buy my music. That opportunity was not given to me and it was sold to somebody else. And so I just figured I was the one who made this music first. I can just make it again. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Um, I have to say. So that's what we're doing. So when something says in parentheses, Taylor's version next to it, that means I own it, which is exciting. <laughs> it's, um, it's quite... It's quite a clever a loophole, oh, Taylor. I really tip my cap. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's, you know, it's also interesting um, to kind of go back and relive this nostalgia with fans who are the reason why I get to do this and why I get to, like, sit here and, and like, have this lovely chat with you. Um, going back and, and reliving these things with the fans, and this time around, I get to really, I get to do things that I know they wish I would have done the first time. That's really Because cool. I'm always listening, and I'm always lurking, <laughs> and I'm, I'm always listening to their opinions and their theories and what, the, you know, they'll, they, they will let me know which songs should have been singles. Yeah. They let me know which songs did not get videos and should have gotten videos. And so I just like, you know what, like I'm listening, and I'm making the videos, and I'm doing the things. Really cool. I want to ask, I mean, I have emotional connections to songs I listened to for the first time 10 years ago. I can only imagine what it's like for you having written them. Like, is it, uh, is it cathartic to go back and re-record them, or does it 
when they're about painful things, do you like feel it all over again? I mean, I think from one thing that I noticed about this, just this week in general, is that I think back to the release week of Red, which is the, the album that is, you know, just in yep. case anybody missed it. Um, so this, this originally is, this. came it's out. Taylor's like, version. Yeah, it came <laughs> out originally about a decade ago. And um, I was 22. And that release week was so stressful because nobody's heard any of the music. There are like 14 different genres on this album. It's a real <laughs> patchwork quilt of genre. I was really experimenting. A lot of 22 year olds are going to bounce around on genres. Hopefully, yeah. yeah, you know, that's what we want for them. Absolutely. Um, but I think that I was so focused on like, is anyone gonna like it? And then I was also like, at the time, like honestly, really sad. Um, Cause I'd actually gone through, uh, you know, the stuff that I had <laughs> sung yeah. about. But this time I'm just like, I got like, I have like got sunglasses on and like a mojito and just like, <laughs> it's chill this time. It's really nice to be able to put this album out and like, and not be sad, not be like, taking breaks in between interviews to cry. Yeah. It's very, I'm telling you, it's much better this way. Yeah. Much better. We, I think we're all happy. Yeah. With that said. You get some time passing, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're <laughs> reliving your experience from your 20s when you're in your 30s. It's really the way to do it. Yeah. I wonder if, uh, if there are people who might think that they were the one you were singing about if it's easier or far, far worse for them 10 years later. I haven't thought about their experience. To be I honest. think that's the, that's the biggest burn. <laughs> I think there's nothing they'd rather hear less. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, I have so many more questions for you. We'll be right back with more from Taylor Swift. <laughs> Welcome back to Late Night. We're here uh, with Taylor Swift, and uh, we were talking uh, during the break. Some uh, very exciting collaborations that you are now able to do uh, because you're re-recording these songs. Uh, Chris Stapleton, uh, Ed Sheeran, Phoebe Bridgers. Is that... Yeah. It must be so nice to have a wish list and then reach out to these people. It, it really, really was. Um, essentially, there are songs on this album that I've called from the vault tracks because in my mind, there's a metaphorical vault of songs that, that I love that I, I, I've written, I write a lot of songs for albums and then I pare it down. Um, but these were songs that didn't make it on the album because I wanted to save them for the next album. And then it turned out the next album was like a whole different thing. And so they get left behind and you always think back on these songs and you're like, what would have happened? I wish I could, I wish people could hear this. Like, but it belongs in that moment in time. So now that I get to go back and revisit my old work, I've, dug up those songs um, from the crypt they were in. And I have like, I've reached out to artists that I love and said, do you wanna, do you wanna sing this with me? You know, um, Phoebe Bridgers is one of my favorite artists in the world. I just think she's like, if she sings it, I will listen to it. <laughs> it's, um, I just, I love her voice. And then I also love that she's a very funny person. Do these people believe it when they get a phone call saying, hi, it's Taylor Swift, I want you to sing a song well, with me? Well, I try not to cold call people. Right. Um, That's a good insight. It can go yeah. very bad. Sure. Um, but, you know, I, I do send like a very long text. <laughs> that I've crafted over many days. And I'll send the song because I don't want them to ever feel pressured to say yes to something creatively if it doesn't gel with what they wanna do. So um, with Phoebe, I reached out and I sent her this song called Nothing New, which I wrote when I was 22. And it, it's really, really special to me because it was the first time I was not a shiny new artist. I was on my fourth album and I felt like, I think this happens to a lot of artists where they, they have their breakthrough moment and then the moment after that is really hard for them because they're just not getting the same. It's like the first time you walk into a room at a party and everyone's like, oh, Kevin's here! <laughs> when you have your breakthrough moment, like, Kevin! And then, and then, the, then the next time you walk in, they're like, sup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the third time you walk in, they're like, um, so uh, what do you want to do tomorrow? Do you got, do you got to, blah, 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 and they're just talking. And you're like, but I'm here. And you used to, so I was dealing with that moment in my life. And um, so that song's really special to me. And I sent it to Phoebe and said, 
it would mean the world to me if you would do this as a duet, because I really wanted another female artist who I loved to sing it with me, because I think it has a very female artist perspective that we go through that experience. And her response was, I've been waiting for this text my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. That's a very, uh, I'm sure she was waiting for that. I think a lot of people are, are waiting and exciting for the fact that you have recorded, uh, there's a 10 minute version of a song, I mean. I mean, I, I just want to say, really nice I haven't heard a gasp like that, that, was, that was since really I great. said, now it's time for a closer look. That was very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so uh, tell us about, but this was, so you've always had this version. Yes, this is the original thing that I wrote. So the, the, there's a song called All Too Well that was never a single. <laughs> You guys are really, this is very nice what you're doing out there. Um, th this song was never a single, it never had a video, and somehow the fans just turned it into the song from this album. And when I, I, I used to get so sad when I would sing it that I could barely like get through the song, and then over time I realized the fans were just like screaming the words back to me so loudly that it made it a very joyful experience for me to sing the song. And since. It has been a joyful thing for me to sing. I play it all the time in concert, and it's just so fun to hear them scream the words. Um, so this song originally was, it's, it's a very long song as it is, but it, it was originally 10 minutes long. Um, and I just kept, I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop. Uh, but I was like, oh, you gotta, you gotta fit something on an album, so that's unreasonable for it to be 10 minutes long. And so I had to cut out certain verses and parts of the bridge and, and lots of different things that I really loved. Left some of my favorite lines on the cutting room floor, and I'm really happy that people get to hear them. I'm so proud of this version of it. I think this version is the version of the song that was meant to be heard. That is really thrilling. And then on top of all that, um, there's a short film uh, that you wrote, yeah. that you directed. <laughs> Um, two, uh, two fantastic young actors, uh, uh, Dylan and Sadie, who I believe, uh, I, I hope this is great, also huge fans of yours. It must have been a big deal for them to, to do this. It's, it was really wonderful working with Sadie Sink and Dylan O'Brien. They're just absolutely, I'm just blown away by what they did in this, in this short film. I, I, wrote, uh, I wrote this short film and wanted to direct it, and um, the only two people that I imagined playing the two characters that it was Sadie and Dylan. And I, if Sadie, she was the first one I went to, and if Sadie had said no, I don't think I would have made it. I don't think I would have made the film. I think I would have just been like, this is a sign, like, you know, but, but she, um, I do like working with friends or people who I think would be excited about working with me. I don't really want to have to convince someone. I'm not very interested in that at all. If somebody, I've never made a short film before. I've directed some music videos, but I kind of needed to reach out to people who were like, would maybe believe that I would be capable of it. Um, and Sadie just, Sadie got it immediately. Dylan was like, yup. And I watch everything he's in. I'm a huge fan of his and both of them. I, they just, they went out and they just like left it all on the field there in that short film. They really just acted their asses off. Well, uh, it's terrific. And I can only imagine uh, what uh, the next couple of days are going to be like uh, for your fans. You have done them. I uh, hope good. I, I think good. I got. I, fair, I feel very confident about that. <laughs> um, it's so lovely to see you again. You're Thanks for lovely. being here, you guys. That's Taylor Swift. Red Taylor's version is out tomorrow.